Hi, welcome to Gio's Latin Table. My name is George and I am a executive chef and owner at Mi Havana in Emmaus, Pennsylvania. Today we have an amazing dish going on for you. We have some an appetizer, an entree, and dessert going on for you. And these items we love to do at the restaurant. There are some type of popular items for our guests. So let's start off with our Cuban picadillo. So we have here um, ground beef. Um, this is a 90-10, uh, which means it's only 10% of the fat. Uh, you could also buy a 80-20 if you can't find a uh, 90-10. Okay, so we're gonna start searing this. Um, I put in here about three tablespoons of oil, and it could be any oil, um, canola or vegetable oil is fine. Uh, we're gonna just put this here and have it Start cooking. And as that cook, we kind of smash it up a bit and just spread it around so it could try to cook evenly. You could cover it if you like. What it's gonna do is gonna hold the moisture and uh, have the meat cook a lot faster. Uh, so as that cooks, we're gonna cut some vegetables. Um, what we're gonna be using in the um, picadillo. Okay, so uh, easy way to, uh, this is going to take about half of a pepper because uh, we only have one pound of beef. Um, but before you start cutting up, you want to make sure that get all the little stickers off. Um, grocery puts that on there. Um, cut the head part, the stem part off first. And as when you cut that, just make a little groove in here and just go along the side uh, as a wheel and you could get all that other stuff out. I'm gonna make sure you get all the uh, seeds out as well. Um, always when you cut, keep the skin down. Uh, usually the skin's a lot tougher so when you're cutting in with the knife, it'll get a little hard and you hear a little crackling sound. But if you do it with the flesh up, it's a lot easier, a lot quicker. Always have your kind of knuckles out to the side. So like that, it, you won't cut yourself and it'll serve as a little guiding tool to cut, okay? Onion. I'm gonna use a half an onion as well. Uh, no stickers. That part off, we'll cut in half. We'll start removing the uh, skin. Um, be careful because usually onions have two kind of layers. Um, it has a very thin coat on top, okay? So I usually try to grab just the whole first layer of onion and just to be safe and you're not gonna cook anything, any of the, uh, the paper uh, of the onion that's on there, that very thin clear coat. We're gonna go in the form of julienne and then we're gonna go horizontally and try to hold off those parts. And then you just guide it and cut down. All right. Once you have it all there, you can rough chop it. Don't need to get everything equally uh, proportioned. You're not on uh, one of these uh, sh cooking shows that um, they'll grade you on the size and the proportion of the onions. It's gonna all get cooked into that Cuban picadillo, which is gonna be delicious. You are gonna love that if you haven't made this already at home. Okay, so we have that completed. We'll move this along and out of the way, and we'll go ahead and check on our Cuban picadillo that's going on there and see how that's cooking. Halfway there, we want to churn it and stir it. Guys, and for the, the ground beef, if you want to, if you don't see uh, just pure ground beef, or you have a mix uh, type of ground beef, you can use that also. Um, they do sell, uh, it's mix, it's a uh, meatloaf mix that has uh, pork in it as well. If you don't eat pork and then don't get it, just get the ground beef. At this point, since it's halfway done, and then I like to go ahead and start putting my ingredients in so it can start 
saturating its flavor. Uh, we're going to use half a teaspoon of kosher salt. Um, I recommend kosher salt because it just brings out the flavor in your food uh, rather than using iodine salt. Uh, don't use that. We'll just sprinkle that around and we'll use also half a tea, uh, tablespoon of cumin, ground cumin. Uh, this is one of the ingredients that they use a lot in Cuba. A lot of dishes do have this uh, ingredient going on in, in a lot of their uh, dishes. Okay, so we'll just sprinkle that as well. We'll uh, give it a nice stir, move that all around, make sure everything gets a little bit of that picadillo and we'll let it sit down and just continue to absorb a lot of flavor. And as that's cooking, I'm gonna show you how to start making our tres leche dessert, okay? So this is a dessert that's very popular um, at the restaurant. And basically when the customer orders the uh, tres leche cake, we go ahead and we make it at that point uh, as far as it's deconstructed and we bring it all together. We don't pre-make and put it in the refrigerator and let it sit there for a day or two um, when a customer orders it. We want to make sure we're delivering a fresh product that's flavorful and it holds up. So we're gonna make uh, the whipped cream that we put on the cake first. And we'll use a mixer. We have one cup of heavy cream, or you could also buy heavy whipping cream, both the same thing, you're gonna get the same uh, effect from it. We are gonna use a tablespoon of vanilla. Uh, vanilla extract, pure vanilla, it's okay. If you have pure, go ahead, use it. We're gonna put a cup of sugar in there. So for every cup of heavy cream, you use a cup of sugar for that. I will show you the, uh, the density of the whipped cream um, in a, a couple of minutes. Usually I let it whip for about two or three minutes. Okay, so I wanna make sure we got the proper texture, and if you can look, if it peaks like that, it's not dripping off, this is what we want to get. Um, so this was done pretty much in like in a minute. Uh, so we'll put this on the side here, and we're gonna start mounting up that in a little bit for you. So now we want to make the cake, okay? Uh, the cake, you can either do it from scratch, if you don't have time, if you're entertaining guests, and you, you don't want to go through the trouble in making it from scratch, you can use from a box as well. So, I have, uh, I brought with me today a box and we occasionally will use this as well. Just so you can see, that's going to be equally as good as you make a cake from scratch. Okay, so we will use three eggs. You can follow the same recipe that's on the the box uh, the box calls for three eggs you always want to crack your eggs in first before you put any other ingredient okay so and the reason being if you lose a piece of a shell in there you want to make sure you be able to get it out and it's not going to cook with the shell so like that it's easier to find rather than you have all the other ingredients in there and then can't find the darn shell and start digging through it. So you want to whisk at. Now this uh, recipe box is going to require half a cup of oil. So we'll get that in there. You can get a cup of water cold preferably, okay? And you're gonna have also a tablespoon of vanilla. So this is my uh, additional take to give a little bit more flavor to the pizzazz, because 
What we're cooking in the Cuban food is all about flavor. And we want you to have a party in your mouth. We have that, we give it a nice little whisk. We'll start dropping the cake mix in. And you wanna make sure that you're not gonna get little balls of, of the cake mix. So you wanna make sure you break everything down well and nothing is sitting up on there. Now, if you have a mixer at home and you wanna throw everything in the mixer, then that's fine as well. Should give you a good consistency. Okay, so this is pretty nice and smooth. No lumps. And that's what we make sure you get, don't have there. Okay, oh, let us check on that picadillo's cooking. All right, you smell that already. So right now, since the meat is nice and brown, you wanna start incorporating your vegetables in there. So we have a half a cup of diced onions. Yeah, half a cup of red peppers and green peppers. I always look uh, for ways and forms to bring color to, to my food, um, but in doing so, I also want to bring flavor. So I have to make sure that I'm balancing out colors and flavors that it's just going to bring everything together. Uh, we are going to put a tablespoon of, gar of crushed garlic, or minced garlic. You could do it from scratch or uh, you could, in the grocery they do sell the little uh, jars that have minced garlic in it. I prefer to crush my own. It just brings more flavor um, into uh, my food other than getting something in a container. We'll just mix that in and make sure that all the meat has some onion and the garlic incorporated. And make sure you also you're, you're breaking down your meat as it cooks because um, you want to make sure that when it's all done, that's easy and edible to eat and it's not lumpy um, uh, to, to the taste bud to eat. So it's something similar to making chili, but does not take as long as making your chili. And you want it a little bit more uh, refined um, when you're cooking it. So we're gonna let that cook for a little bit more, and then we're gonna add two more ingredients to that. Uh, but in the meantime, we're gonna go back to the cake. So I have a pan here, and uh, which is already pre-oiled. Um, you could get spray, uh, oil spray, butter spray, and put that on there. And you want to pour everything in, into the middle so it could just spread in the pan, okay? You should get all the batter out. Now, as everything is in there, you want to give it a little shake try to even everything out, and then drop the pan. You wanna get the air bubbles out. And if you drop the pan, you're gonna start seeing little air pockets. I'm not sure if you probably can see that, but there's little air pockets there, and it makes it cook better uh, when you put it in the oven. And put it in the oven to cook. Usually, the box will say about 30 minutes, 35 minutes. I set my timer for 30 minutes, and then I'll go back in and I'll check on that. So while that's baking, um, we're gonna add a few more ingredients to our Cuban picadillo, okay? Because we do need that for our empanadas, which is our appetizer. Uh, we're gonna add here approximately, this is one fourth of a cup of green olives. Now the green olives, you also could buy at the grocery. You could buy them already sliced. If you can't find them sliced, you could get the olives with the pimiento inside, and that's perfectly okay. Add, add a tablespoon of uh, cilantro, okay? So I'm gonna sprinkle this on top. I'm gonna leave some for later for when we garnish our plate. We're also gonna add a uh, half a cup of crushed tomatoes. So we're gonna add that to there. We're also gonna add a uh, half a cup of beef broth. Um, you can use uh, beef stock, beef broth, the same thing. 
Um, I purchased uh, one in a can, already made for you. However, if in the event that you can't find that in the grocery and they only have the base, um, if you can't find beef broth or beef stock, which they come in a can or in a container, a quart container, uh, you can also get one of these. So basically, just boil a cup of water or how much water you may need depending um, on the amount of beef that we're working with uh, and use a tablespoon. Uh, let the water come to a boil and put the tablespoon in, just whisk it in, okay? Um, so this is an alternate solution. This is the easier solution. Um, so we're gonna open this up and we're gonna add that with that crushed tomato that we just put in to that Cuban picadillo. We are gonna add about half a cup of this and just bring it in together. We're gonna shake that around and just make sure everything is getting that richness of flavor. All right, we'll put the lid in there um, and let it saturate itself with flavor. So we're gonna continue now with the dessert. Um, we just made the whipped cream a little while ago. Um, we let it peak. We put the cake in to cook, and now we're gonna do the Thres Leche Milk. Now, our, my customers love our Thres Leche. They say it's the best they've had. So, we're gonna bring here two cans of evaporated milk. Now, if you want to, I use at times uh, some heavy cream, and I'll add to this, but today I'm just gonna have this uh, evaporated milk. Usually customers tell me that it's not too sweet. I'm like, yeah, I, I don't add a lot of other uh, sweeteners into it other than one can of condensed milk. And that just helps to keep it balanced. Get that in there. And last but not least, we're gonna put this uh, condensed milk in there. Put that in there. So this right here, it's just the other portion of the sweetness they'll get, but not overly sweet. We're also gonna put in here a tablespoon of vanilla extract. So I'll just measure it into here. It's gonna get that. We'll give it a nice whisk. And as simple as that, if you wanna add a four milk in here, you could do that as well. It'll work. We usually put it in a container like this. And this amount of milk will be more than enough for you to use for your cake that you're baking, which we'll be pulling out very shortly. So we have our whipped cream, our milk, our picadillo is cooking. Can't wait for that to come out. We have our cake. Okay, so we're gonna plate this up. I'm gonna show you how we do it at Mi Havana. Okay, we'll move this up to the side there. Now I'll take the one in the middle, set it the one in the corner, and we'll put this over here on the side. So this is how we do it. We'll start, I don't drop the milk on the top. I want every side to get saturated with milk. I want every bite that the customer gets, it's gonna be moist, it's gonna be flavor in there, it's gonna be wet. And this is what the Tres Leche is about. So if you ever go anywhere and they give you a tres leche and you don't see no milk on that plate, or you don't taste that milk on that cake, it's not a tres leche, sorry. We wanna keep it real, we wanna keep it flavorful. We want you to have a party in your mouth and be happy. I kinda squeeze a little bit as I'm pouring down the milk so it could just soak into it. And I can feel it right now that the cake is heavy. Keep some around, okay? We'll change our gloves and we're we'll going to add the whipped cream to this. There you go. Fresh whipped cream. You don't have to go out to a restaurant to get a tres leche cake. No, unless if you don't mind doing the work. And we also like to uh, kind of top it off with a uh, fresh strawberry. So we we'll like to kind of do some slices in between there and kind of fan it. Make it a little fancy. To top it off, we're gonna use some guava sauce. 
Um, and we're gonna just garnish it like that. Now, guava is a fruit that's used a lot in a lot of the countries in the Caribbean. In Cuba, is used a lot. So I wanted to show you how to incorporate the guava sauce with our dessert. And there you go. Tres leche milk cake. Now, just to show you, um, the guava sauce, you could get in different forms. How we make it at the restaurant, I usually buy the uh, paste and I like to reduce it. So for each 14 ounce paste, I usually put a cup of water and I put it in the saucepan, let it boil, whisk it, let it sit there for a while, let it boil, keep on whisking it. When you don't see any chunks um, in it, then it's ready. Um, you, you can let it cool down and just transfer it to a squeeze bottle container or any other container you may have and just sprinkle it around your dessert. If you don't want to go through this process, the other option is you can buy it already made for you. It's called guava marmalade. Um, it comes in a, in a can. You can probably find this uh, in the bodega, in the grocery store. Uh, just go in the can sections and you shouldn't have a problem finding this. So either way, this is the way we go at the restaurant. This is the easier way. And you have your guava sauce. Okay, and that is your tres leches, what we'll have for dessert. We'll check up on our picadillo. It looks great. You know, I'm gonna give this a little taste just to make sure it's what I'm expecting. Really good. If you have MPA, come down and see me. If you're in the Lehigh Valley, stop in, just Google me. I don't know, me Havana Cuban cuisine. I'll come up, find me, try out with Cuban picadillo. That was full of flavors. Doesn't need anything else. But that's going. I'm gonna heat up the pan in the back and um, we're gonna uh, make some sweet plantains. Um, we have some white rice and some black beans that we made earlier today and we're gonna plate that together with the Cuban picadillo. We wanna do some sweet plantains with that. This is a sweet plantain. Often customers, when they come into the restaurant, uh, we serve fried plantains and sweet plantains. Some people don't uh, know what it is. Uh, this is the first time them trying Cuban food. So I take the time and I'll, I'll come out to the table and I'm engaging with my customers and talking to them and explaining to them uh, the, all the components that may be on the dish and how we make it. So this originally is, a, is green. It may be a little bit bigger, but there's two processes in it. We get two um, side, uh, sides from the plantain. When it's green, we fry them. Um, we take off the skin, uh, we cut up round, we fry them once, we pull them out, then we smash them, and then we, we fry them again so it could get nice and crispy in the outside. Then we throw, sprinkle some uh, kosher salt um, on them as well. They're just great. As the time uh, progresses, the green banana turns yellow and then yellow is turn a little bit dark or get pigmentations. But once it's soft and it looks like this, it's ready to go, it's sweet. So we'll just cut the ends. We make a nice incision coming through here. Doesn't matter about the sticker on this one. And you have your sweet plantain there. Sweet plantain, um, different from the fried. Uh, we'll cut this kind of in a bias, which is at a 45 degree angle and it'll look like this. All our dishes either come with either sweet plantain or fried plantain just to uh, complement the dish in, in, in flavor. We want to use something deep. We're going to use this same pan to fry our empanadas. Okay, we haven't done that yet. I know it's the appetizer, but we, had to, we have to wait first for the uh, Cuban picadillo to be made because we're going to stuff that in there. Okay, so I'm going to turn that off. That's already made. So, so good. Uh, I'm going to start warming up my black beans and rice. And we'll come back to that um, in just a little while. Uh, but we're still waiting on the heat of that to come up. And that's on high. 
So let me just put another glove on here. It's just form of habit. Uh, working in the restaurant, I'm constantly changing gloves, wiping them out. The way you'll know that your oil is ready to go and start frying is that you see some ripples on top of the oil. It's already, at that point, it's hot and it's ready to go. Um, so you don't really want to put an empanada to fry if it's not already, the, the temperature is not at 350 about. It's not really hot because um, otherwise it's just going to soak up the oil, okay? So it looks like it's, it's starting to get ripple out. I'm going to hold off on that, but in the meantime, we're going to start working on the empanada, okay? So we have some uh, yellow uh, shell dough shells. Um, they sell this, again, in all the groceries, and you could get a uh, different name brand. It doesn't matter. It's usually made same. However, you are going to find two colors. You're going to find them in white and you're gonna find this yellow. The yellow has another ingredient. Um, when they cook it, they add to it. So that's what gives it that yellow color, okay? You're gonna pull some of this picadillo out that's freshly made like that. We're gonna cook uh, the empanadas at the same time with the sweet plantains and get that going. Um, this is usually, we add about an ounce and a half to two ounces of meat to our empanadas. So we don't want too little, and we don't want to overstuff it either, because otherwise it's going to be hard to seal, okay? We'll take the empanada, we'll hold it as so, in the middle, and we'll start kind of closing it up a bit, okay? Some cultures, some people use a fork, and they press on it on the side, uh, like that, around. Um, I don't use that method. We kind of braid our empanada and we'll take it from the end and start closing it off. Such as, it gives more a kind of a, a security that it's not gonna open up and explode while you're frying it. When you braid it, it's double tight. And I'll show you how this is gonna look. I have one already that's that we made earlier in the show and it should look like this so we fold it as you can see it's nice and tight see how full of meat it is okay so like that we know that when the customer is biting into it, every bite they're gonna get some meat in there but we're gonna put our sweet plantain sweet plantain is okay if, you, if it's not completely at 350 Eventually it'll start uh, sizzling and you know that's uh, very hot, but I won't put that empanada in there yet. Okay. I'll show you how to do the white rice in our next uh, show, but in the meantime, I just want to get a little head start on what the meal looks like and how it's going to taste and how we serve it at Mi Havana. So we have the white rice uh, already made and uh, we uh, kind of took a head start on this. We did this earlier in the show and just to make sure we had it ready for you. Because when you're cooking the white rice, it usually takes about 45 minutes or so. But it's nice and fluffy, it's loose. And that's how we serve it at Mi Havana. Um, and we have here some black beans. Uh, usually in Cuba, they complement a lot of the dishes with black beans. Uh, so take a, you take a quick look at, made this earlier in the show, and full of flavor. The smell just, oh, makes me want to have some dinner right now. We got a lot of other ingredients in there that we normally use, including the cumin, which brings out a lot of flavor to everything. Uh, okay, so we got that going. That's almost ready there. They still need a little bit more time on here. Okay, now there's one more ingredient that I forgot to introduce it to you with our Cuban picadillo. And that is raisins. Talking about sweet and savory. This really makes you happy. You got a little sweetness in there and a little bit of uh, and all the savory. So for about a pound of beef, um, I would say one fourth of a cup of raisins. 
Um, and you can try it out like that. If you think that raisins is not for you, then you could exclude it. Don't have to put that in, okay? But this is kind of like tradition. People kind of look for this. Um, at least those individuals that had this before and maybe had in Cuba. I had a customer come into the restaurant once and this is the first thing they ordered. They wanted to see how legit we were uh, at Mi Havana in cooking Cuban food. So he ordered this, and when I went out to the table to check up on him and see how everything was, and he was so happy, he said, you guys are really legit. I've been to places before, and I had the Cuban picadillo, and they didn't put the raisins in. And I said, wow, okay, so he knew about the flavors, profile, what goes on into the, uh, the Cuban picadillo. So he was very happy, needless to say, that it had the raisins in there. So we get that sweet and savory flavors going on. Uh, we're gonna drop that empanada in now, um, which was part of our appetizer. And let's see, uh, hopefully it gets nice and crispy quick there. Should put up the heat a little bit more. And we're, always check on your uh, sweet plantains. Because they're sweet, they have a lot of sugar, so they'll tend to caramelize very quickly um, if you have a high heat. Okay, so you want to get it a nice caramelized color to it, a brownish color. You know, at that point, they're ready to go. Um, but you have to keep an eye on them because they could burn on you quick because of the sugar contents that the sweet plantain has. Okay, this right here is about a two and a half, three inch uh, type of pan. And I put like about just about one fourth of oil. Um, going to the top, uh, not even halfway, uh, because whatever you're gonna put in there, remember the oil is gonna rise more, so you don't want that to overflow and uh, maybe start a kitchen fire. One fourth is enough. If you think that that may not be enough, and then you could always add a little bit more to it. And while that fries, we're gonna start plating. Okay, so presentation is everything. Um, remember, everyone eats with their eyes first before they dig into your meal. So we like to, like everywhere you go, restaurants, some do better plating than others. Some may not. But at Mimi Havana, we like to bring to you a nice presentation. My presentation is gonna represent that food that you're gonna put in your mouth that's gonna be full of flavors and give you a very happy moment. Slam your cup into your plate. Bring it like this first and just tip it. Um, safer, you're not gonna splatter or crack any of your dishes or your um, moldings that you may have, okay? So we're gonna get those delicious black beans. And we're gonna put this on the side here. This thing's getting me hungry already. Clear off your plate. Take that on there. Okay, all right, so we're gonna go back here with the uh, sweet plantains. Put a little paper so it can soak up the oil. Then you can always remove it. All right, we're gonna put this on the side. We're gonna plate that picadillo that's been uh, simmering there for a while now. Um, remember, you don't have to uh, keep this all day. This will be done very quick in 45 minutes or less depending on the amount of meat you have, you could cook this off and it would be great. Um, it's not a chili that has to be there for three hours. Um, you don't want to do that because then you probably end up drying it. So we'll get this picadillo going. I'm going to plate it on here. It looks so beautiful. The colors alone, it just calls you. Okay. And we just drop it like that. And we'll put the sweet plantains around it, like so. And like I said earlier in the show, every day is Christmas at Mi Havana, and this is why. We'll just drop fresh cilantro, chopped up on there, some of the beans, the rice. And this is our Cuban picadillo of flavor, you're gonna love it once you do this at home.
I'll put this right here. We'll take a look at this other plantain and see how our empanada is doing. The empanada looks like it's pretty much done. Got a little extra there. Having sweet plantain is never enough. You always want a little bit more. Um, it's just so good. All right, we'll turn this off and we're gonna just get this out of the frying pan. Um, also, you may wanna get a little basket maybe when you're cooking and put some paper towels on there. So when you get your empanadas out, you could just let it soak, get the uh, oil finish coming out. Okay. Make sure everything is off. We'll walk away because you're gonna be drawn to the smell, the aroma of the food. They want to start eating and forget something is on. Here you go, nice puffy pastry. And like I said, everything gets Christmas at Mi Havana. We want to bring happiness to everyone. So we'll just sprinkle it with a little bit more flavor to that. So we have here today, one of our popular dishes at Mi Havana, beef empanadas. We do serve this as a trio, not a single, uh, individual one. Um, we have our Cuban picadillo, our bright rice, black beans, our Cuban picadillo, and sweet plantains is company with. Um, and for dessert, we got our tres leche cake. Can't wait for you to try this at home. So, hey, let's dig in into this and see how this is. Hmm, the crispiness of the dough and that picadillo inside, full of flavor. It's so good. This is what usually the, the customers tell me when they come in, it's so good. So try this at home, you'll love it. Let's try this Cuban picadillo. All right, we'll chop a little bit of the Cuban beans on this white rice. What a difference having a little raisins in there makes. That little sweet and savory going on. Oh, can't forget the sweet plantain. Now this is a meal that your guests will not forget. Make this at home. Invite your family and friends. They're gonna love you. How about let's try this uh, Tres Leche cake. Mmm. Packed with flavors. Creaminess of that whipped cream that we did earlier today. That guava sauce. And that cake so saturated with milk, it's just so good. Gotta try this at home. Make sure you get your guests over. And this is how we do it in Mi Havana. You can find us um, online. Uh, our website is mihavanalv.com. You can find us on Facebook, Mi Havana Cuban Cuisine. And if you're browsing through Instagram, and then it'll be uh, Mi Havana underscore LV. Check us out. Look at our menu. If you're ever in town in the area in the Lehigh Valley, stop by, give us a visit, try our flavorful, wonderful food, uh, our Cuban cuisine. Your, your family, you're gonna love it. Your family will love it. Whoever's with you is gonna love it. And like we say in Mi Havana, from our kitchen to your bellies with love and flavor. Thanks for watching. See you next time at Gio's Latin Table.